tau overflows clarity of the mind the prelude the last thing is meditation the innermost wealth and when you renounce it you have renounced to yourself then no self remains not even the meditating self the great meditator even that image is broken you have fallen into nothingness only in this nothingness the discontinuity happens as prelude to the old has disappeared and the new has happened you become available through meditation whatsoever is felt through meditation do not think it is enlightenment these are just glimpses of a lessening disease of a disappearing disease you feel good the disease is less so you feel relatively healthy real health has not yet there but you are more healthy than before and it is good to be healthy than before existence is a play of cosmic energy take each moment of life as a play of energy a new process of transformation comes in motion therefore the clarity of the mind that comes through this is the beginning this is the first step this clarity is only of a lessening disease not of health this clarity is of a lessening of disease this clarity is of the falling of barriers if one barrier falls you are less burdened your eyes are less clouded if another barrier falls you are still more unburdened your eyes become still more clear but this clarity is not of enlightenment this clarity is only of a lessening disease not of health when all barriers disappear with those barriers your mind also disappears then you cannot see now my mind is clear because it is no more then you simply say now there is no mind the mind has dissolved when there is no mind then clarity is of enlightenment that is absolutely different than another dimension has opened but you will have to pass through clarities of mind remember remember always that no matter how clear your mind is how clear your mind becomes it is still a barrier no matter how transparent your mind becomes even if it becomes a transparent glass you can look to the other side still it is a barrier and you will have to break this completely before the new process sets in motion so sometimes it happens that as one is meditating he becomes more and more clear more sane more still more still yet he clings to it because it has helped him to silence his mind and tension then a silence is felt then one clings to meditation and thinks that everything is achieved great masters have always been emphasizing that a day comes when you have to throw your meditation as well 
This you will find shocking, but this is reality. Sufis use three steps for clarity. And my emphasis is on giving you shocks so that the problem, the process continues. The first is Tarke Tark. Tark means logic and Tark is also used as a verb. Abandon logic. All arguments have to be abandoned. This is the first step. Second, why are you meditating? What is the goal? Then you have to abandon all desires for the other world, heaven, to attain to the peace of mind, clarity of the mind and things like these. The last barrier in the process is the master, Tarke Maula. Maula refers to the master, abandon the master as well. In the last moments of awakening, you are all alone, all barriers are dropped. There is nothing. Buddha was in that moment, all desires, logic, slowly and slowly logic has vanished. All desires, when he was in Niranjana river and he could not cross over the river, he was so weak and frail. He saw each star disappearing. Then thought came to his mind, what is the use of all this? Even if, an, if enlightenment happens, how can he sustain? I'll tell you a Zen story. Bokuzu was meditating very deeply, as you at times say. You do not take meditation as a play. Man learns more through the play than through the serious act. This is why we have the Montessori system of teaching the children. If we start from the very beginning learning anything as a play, a great motion is set. He was meditating with his whole heart. His master would come every day and he would just laugh and go back. Bokuzu became annoyed. The master would not say anything. He would just come and look at Bokuzu, laugh and go away. And Bokuzu was feeling very good in meditation. This is what at times you mentioned it to me that I was feeling very good. His meditation was deepening and he needed someone to appreciate it. This moment comes when meditation begins to deepen and the seeker comes to the master saying that my meditation is deepening. But if the master is real, he will not say anything. He will act just like Bokuzu's master. Bokuzu was waiting for the master to pat him and say, Good Bokuzu, you did well. But the master just laughed. The laughter was felt insulting as if Bokuzu was not progressing, but he was progressing as far as he was concerned. And he progressed more the laughter grew more and more insulting. If you are feeling very good and suddenly someone says or does not appreciate, it annoys the seeker. It is insulting. It was impossible to tolerate it now. One day the master came. Bokuzu was feeling absolutely silent as far as the mind can go. There was no noise within and no thought. The mind was absolutely transparent. No barrier was felt. He was filled with a subtle deep happiness. Joy was bubbling all over. He was in ecstasy. 
Thus he thought, now my master will not laugh. Now the moment has come and he is going to tell me, now Bokuzu, you have become enlightened. That day master came, but he came with a brick in his hand and he started rubbing that brick on the rock on which Bokuzu was sitting for meditation. Bokuzu was so silent and the rubbing of the brick created noise. Bokuzu became annoyed. At last, he could not tolerate it. So he opened his eyes and asked the master, What are you doing? The master said, I am trying to make this brick a mirror. I am trying to make this brick a mirror and by continuously rubbing it on the rock, I hope that someday this brick will become a mirror. Bokuzu said, You are behaving stupidly. This brick is not going to become a mirror. This is how in Zen tradition the relation between the master and disciple is. This brick is not going to become a mirror. No matter how much you rub it, it is not going to become a mirror. The master laughed again and said, Then what are you doing? This mind can never become enlightened. It can never become transparent. And you go on rubbing and rubbing it. You are polishing it and you are feeling so good that when I laugh, you feel annoyed. And suddenly as the master threw the brick, Bokuzu became aware. When the master threw the brick, suddenly he felt that master was right and the mind broke. Then from that day on, there was no mind, no meditation. Medit mind has dropped. With the mind, meditation also dropped. Meditation is the medicine for the sickness that mind is. He became enlightened. Meditation comes to an end with the dawn of enlightenment. So meditation is the remedy for the disease that the mind is. Zen masters are unique. They have unique way to teach. The way they teach intricate matters which could not be taught otherwise. So take everything in life as a deep play. Enough for now. <laughs>